Imagine a future where we do not just build machines from atoms. We program the atoms themselves. This idea may sound like science fiction, but it sits at the edge of some of today's boldest scientific questions. Could atoms, the basic building blocks of matter, be programmable like software? And an even more provocative idea, could they possess something akin to experience? Not consciousness as humans know it, but a faint glimmer of awareness, a primitive feeling of the world. This is not a fantasy for mystics alone. It has intrigued physicists, philosophers, and neuroscientists alike. Let us start with programming atoms. On a technical level, atoms are programmable, in a way. Scientists can already manipulate individual atoms using tools like scanning, tunneling microscopes, and optical tweezers, precisely positioning them on surfaces or in electromagnetic traps. Quantum computers go even further by programming the quantum states of atoms, or ions, to carry out computations. This shows us that atoms can be controlled, but are they programmable in the way software is? Not quite. They follow deterministic or probabilistic laws of physics, not flexible instructions like a computer chip. Still, at the quantum level, particles can be made to behave differently based on how we measure or prepare them. So, in a loose sense, we are writing atomic script. Now, on to the stranger idea, experience. Could atoms feel something? Most scientists say no. Atoms are not alive, not sentient, and certainly not conscious. But some philosophers and theoretical physicists explore this possibility through ideas like panpsychism, which proposes that all matter, down to atoms, may possess a fundamental form of proto-consciousness, not memory, not thought, but the tiniest shimmer of subjectivity. Why propose this? Because consciousness, in all its richness, must emerge from something. And if brains are built from atoms, maybe the seeds of awareness lie buried deep in matter itself. This is highly speculative and not part of mainstream science, but it encourages interesting questions. Where does mind begin? Can awareness emerge from non-awareness? Some researchers draw parallels to integrated information theory, IIT, which attempts to quantify consciousness in terms of how much information a system integrates. Could a single atom integrate any meaningful information? Probably not. But could a tightly bound group of atoms, a molecule, a nanoscale machine, exhibit a rudimentary experiential property under the right conditions in artificial intelligence and synthetic biology? We are beginning to explore what minimum complexity is needed for something to be aware in any sense. But the answer may depend on how we define awareness and whether it is binary, on or off, or continuous, a gradient of experience. Here is a fun but profound question. If you were an atom, what would the world feel like? No eyes, no ears, no thoughts, but perhaps a response to forces, a sensation of interaction, a ripple of entanglement. It may seem poetic, but at the scale of fundamental physics, interactions are everything. And quantum entanglement, the phenomenon where two particles can affect each other instantaneously at a distance, hints that the universe is more interconnected than classical physics ever imagined. Still, most scientists see such interpretations as metaphors, not evidence of feeling atoms. In the end, atoms are not conscious, as we know it, and they likely never will be, but the idea that matter might have some primitive capacity for experience, some foundational spark that eventually scales up into full awareness, is a hypothesis that bridges physics and philosophy. It forces us to ask, where is the line between matter and mind? While there is no experimental proof that atoms feel anything, questioning the boundary between material and experiential reality may open up new paths of understanding, both of the universe and of ourselves. Atoms, at their core, follow deterministic or probabilistic rules governed by quantum mechanics and the standard model. Their energy levels, spin states, and electron configurations are well-defined and manipulable via external stimuli, such as electromagnetic fields. In quantum computing, atoms, or ions, can serve as qubits where their states are programmed via controlled entanglement and superposition. However, this programmability is not intrinsic. It arises only in engineered environments and does not imply independent agency. 
The atom remains a passive carrier of state, not an active processor of intent. Trapped ion quantum computers use individual atoms to perform programmable quantum operations. An atom in a quantum circuit is like a bead on an abacus moved by a human hand, not thinking, but positioned purposefully. Mainstream science distinguishes self-awareness, the ability to reflect on one's own thoughts, from phenomenal consciousness, or qualia, the subjective feeling of experience. Some theories propose proto-consciousness, the idea that even simple systems might have rudimentary experiential qualities. This view is aligned with panpsychism, which suggests consciousness is a fundamental feature of matter, like mass or charge. However, this remains a metaphysical hypothesis, not testable through conventional experiments. The vast majority of neuroscientists and physicists reject the idea that atoms alone possess any form of awareness or experiential capacity. Panpsychist thinkers like Galen Strawson argue that even electrons may have micro-experiences, though these are not accessible to us. It is like claiming each pixel on a screen has a tiny feeling about its color even though the image only emerges at scale. IIT, proposed by Giulio Tononi, quantifies consciousness as the amount of integrated information, pH, in a system. It suggests that if a system integrates information above a certain threshold, it may be conscious to some degree. A single atom, however, has virtually no internal complexity or networked integration. It cannot compute or compare multiple inputs. Therefore, under IIT, atoms would have either no consciousness or minimal, structureless proto-experience. Complex systems like the brain score high in pH, unlike atomic structures. A photodiode has near nether pH and is not considered conscious, while a brain integrates information across billions of neurons. Consciousness is like an orchestra, and atoms are single notes that don't make music on their own. Quantum coherence refers to the ability of a particle to maintain a well-defined phase relation between states. Some fringe theories, like Orchor Penrose Hameroff, propose that quantum coherence in microtubules enables consciousness. However, atoms maintain coherence only briefly and under very specific conditions. Decoherence occurs rapidly in biological systems due to thermal noise, most physicists argue that coherence at the atomic level cannot sustain the complexity needed for experience. Conflating quantum behavior with mental states leads to pseudoscientific interpretations. A cesium atom used in atomic clocks displays precise coherence but has never shown signs of information integration or awareness. A pendulum swinging perfectly doesn't mean it knows it's swinging, it just follows physics. Consciousness is generally viewed as an emergent property arising from the interaction of vast networks of neurons, not present in the parts individually. Like wetness from water molecules or temperature from kinetic energy, experience emerges only when systems reach critical levels of complexity. Atoms are foundational units, but their behavior is uniform and lacks the variability needed for emergent phenomena like thoughts or awareness. Even in large numbers, Atoms without structured connectivity or feedback loops do not generate mind-like behavior. Thus, while atoms participate in consciousness by forming brains, they are not individually conscious. A single neuron does not think or feel, but billions of interconnected neurons give rise to consciousness. One brick cannot be a house, but many organized bricks with structure can shelter life. Atoms can be steered in behavior using lasers, magnetic traps, and electromagnetic pulses, as in optical tweezers or magneto-optical traps. This allows physicists to create programmable atomic lattices or simulate quantum materials. However, this is manipulation by external systems, not internal decision-making. Atoms do not choose responses, they obey laws. Programmability here refers to deterministic control, not self-modifying behavior. Old atom experiments can simulate complex condensed matter systems using programmable arrays of atoms. Atoms in such systems are like chess pieces, moved according to rules, but without knowing the game. Some speculative models suggest that consciousness is a field, similar to electromagnetic or gravitational fields, and particles like atoms simply tap into it.
This is akin to dualistic monism, where all matter has a physical and a phenomenal property. While intriguing, such theories lack empirical verification and are not accepted within mainstream physics. They attempt to resolve the hard problem of consciousness by assigning a subjective side to all particles, but offer no measurable predictions. Until they do, this remains metaphysical speculation. David Chalmers has proposed that information might have an intrinsic experiential aspect, but admits this is outside empirical science. It is like saying every wave has a hidden melody, even if no ear can hear it. Atoms obey the second law of thermodynamics, always tending toward greater entropy. Their interactions are governed by statistical laws and probability distributions, not goals or intentions. Consciousness implies not just response, but direction, evaluation, and memory, none of which exist in atomic behavior. An atom transitions between states, but it does not care or prefer. It is entirely bound by energy gradients and external interactions. A hydrogen atom will emit a photon when an electron falls to a lower energy level, not by choice, but by necessity. It is like a ball rolling downhill not because it wants to, but because the slope demands it. Current neuroscience and physics agree that consciousness, even at its simplest, requires information processing, internal feedback, and complexity. Atoms, while quantum entities with fascinating properties, do not exhibit these features. No scientific theory today successfully predicts or demonstrates consciousness at the atomic level. While speculative philosophy may entertain proto-conscious particles, this is not a scientific position, it is a metaphysical one. Responsible scientific inquiry separates what is measurable from what is imaginatively possible. Consciousness remains unexplained in full, but its absence in atoms is a position held by nearly all cognitive scientists. Imagining atoms to be conscious is like giving emotions to gears in a clock. They make it more poetic, but not more accurate.